and being demoralizing. I think many Zoomers, yes, Grace, I think many Zoomers have become YouTubers. <laughs> YouTubers, how are you? We are saying some Zoomers are becoming YouTubers. <laughs> So, uh, today we have the very interesting topic, language. Isn't it very interesting? I'm muting Zoomers. Yes, I'm going to tell you in a nutshell all the important things about language. Are you ready? So Ali, please post the YouTube link everywhere. People are waiting because Zoomers have become YouTubers. Okay, guys, I'm sharing my screen. Ta -da -da. Unit five, language. Ready, guys? We will start. Huh. Our unit five language. Day eight, it is. Wow, eight days are over. Did you like that? Okay, I'm going to open my YouTube and keep it here so that I can see all your comments. You are, you are all performing pretty well in the weekly mock test. Weekly mock test is not to test your ignorance. It is to help you learn more and more. Take it like that. Your mark in the mock test is not going to decide your mark in the exam. Remember, okay, every Sunday, it is an opportunity to learn more and more. So the first important topic in language is history of language and language families. There might be a question based on history of language and language families. Let us go over it quickly. You know, our Indo-European language is the largest language family, isn't it? With the highest number of speakers. And the Indo-European language came from Proto-Indo-European. And remember, guys, William Jones, our William Jones, who translated Abhijnana Shakundalam, he was an important linguist. He understood that there are connections between the languages of Europe and Asia, Persia. He understood that Sanskrit and Latin are related. So the Indo-Aryan family of languages then Indo-European family, all these came into being. So which of the following is not a language family? Questions like that. Please remember, it could be important. There is the Sino-Tibetan family of languages. There is the Afro-Asiatic family of languages. There is the Dravidian family of languages. Will you remember, guys? You should look up the uh, tree diagram, Indo-European, then indo uh, below that it is Indo-Iranian, Balto-Slavic, Germanic, Italic. From Germanic developed our English. Even though this is like BA level, remember in language or linguistics, history of languages apart. So there could be questions uh, based on history of language, remember. Somebody is asking me, me in YouTube, is your Udemy course enough for clearing UGC net? My approach is no course is enough to clear UGC net. Any course plus your research, that is what is going to help you in UGC net. Zoomers, YouTubers, beginners, advanced people, remember. They ask questions in net. 
which are not easily readily there in any course you have to study the course and then based on that you have to do your extra research alone if you do extra research every topic you may not cover these days questions are in net in the past few years they are very highly uh, research oriented they are not fact oriented okay so remember that now guys uh, the language families we were talking about there are many language families ours is the uh, indo european family within which uh, we have the germanic will you remember that everybody knows that and there might be questions based on panini remember panini our indian linguist so historically important aspects like uh, panini etc they might uh, ask you some questions about it would be good if you read a little bit extra and guys when you think about history of language you are also thinking about how language developed how language developed you are talking about when you talk about how languages developed you have to also think about human languages and uh, animal languages all those are important how languages developed isn't it uh, hawkett's design features those are all very ba level basic things but it is possible one question can come okay all right moving forward so then you have to talk about modern linguistics there will be questions based on how linguistics developed remember ferdinand de saussure is regarded as the father of modern linguistics before that there was anthropology anthropologists who looked at language like f s boas and uh, at the time of ferdinand de saussure there were people like uh, Leonard Bloom, Bloomfield. Sorry, Leonard Bloomfield. Important people like Leonard Bloomfield, F. S. Boas, uh, even Claude Levi Strauss in anthropology. So these early figures are important. When you talk about beginnings of modern linguistics, you have to talk about the nineteen twenties coming of structural linguistics and. Uh, from structural linguistics how other functional linguistics cognitive linguistics and things like that developed did you understand so branches of linguistics automatically will be the next topic from modern linguistics different branches developed all of you know this diagram that i have given here this diagram is very basic to linguistics isn't it what are the different branches phonetics which means study of speech sounds phonology which means study of phonemes morphology which means study of words syntax which means study of phrases and sentences semantics which means study of the literal meaning of phrases and sentences and pragmatics meaning the context the application of linguistics or when in which context are you speaking that is pragmatics when you study linguistics there are many diagrams like this terms diagrams please use the internet look it up so that you will get easy knowledge and also you will remember easily will you do that many of us are weak in linguistics everybody is not, even i was not Uh, that great in linguistics till now till recently i did not teach linguistics but now i'm learning with you remember i thought linguistics is like science i don't like it many of us think like that but linguistics is very very interesting like mathematics so don't have any negative thought about linguistics no mental block okay sit and study and it will be amazing so today itself start learning all the basics of linguistics many questions are basic questions don't go wrong phonetics phonology morphology syntax semantics 
pragmatics. Everybody should know what these are. Within each of these, there are many terms you should know, many concepts and terms and practices like that in a structured manner we should study. When we talk about branches of linguistics, I found another interesting picture. Of course, everybody knows there is sociolinguistics, applied linguistics, computational linguistics, all these terms are familiar, isn't it? Psycholinguistics, stylistics, historical linguistics, comparative linguistics, and are so many different kinds of linguistics. Linguistics is the scientific study of languages. Languages are themselves of different kinds. There are different kinds of lang languages. What are they? There are analytic languages, agglutinative languages, synthetic, analytic and synthetic languages, agglutinative languages. Do you remember? What is analytic language? A language where uh, there are no inflections. Synthetic languages have inflections. Agglutinative languages, example, my Malayalam. Words are connected, 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 and one long uh, connected expression can be made. Did you understand? You can connect a word with a preposition, with its plural, with its uh, another grammatical form, and you can make agglutinative uh, or connected or combined forms. Dravidian languages are examples. Uh, Japanese, Chinese, do Korean, those are examples. So they might ask you these terms. Within branches of linguistics, there are so many ways in which people can uh, think of branches of linguistics. You can think of synchronic and diachronic linguistics, Hena. You can think of theoretical and applied linguistics. You can think of micro and macro linguistics. Shall I ask you some questions? Uh, which of these deals with other aspects other than language, uh, aspects of language, other aspects come in micro linguistics or macro linguistics? Bolo. Is it in micro linguistics or macro linguistics that you will talk of psychology, that you will talk of sociology? It is in macro linguistics. It is in macro linguistics. There will be questions to check whether you have understood a concept properly. We talk about sign linguistics, forensic linguistics, so many kinds of linguistics. Uh, what branch of linguistics uh, deals with uh, multilingualism, second language acquisition, uh, translation, etc.? Is it theoretical or applied? Two options, theoretical or applied. Tell me multilingualism, then second language acquisition, translation, these come in. Theoretical or applied? They, it comes in, all these come in. Applied linguistics. Within applied linguistics, we talk about translation. We talk about uh, multilingualism. We talk about second language acquisition and language education. Hena, theoretical matlab kya hai? Theoretical means developing linguistic knowledge only, only within language you look at. How it is applied in society that is not looked at in theoretical linguistics. That comes under applied linguistics. Did you understand everybody? If you just read and pay attention, then you will remember everything. Now let me ask you a few more questions. Which aspect of linguistics is about speech sounds? Which aspect of linguistics is about Speech sounds, how you make sounds. Which aspect of linguistics is about how you make sounds? It is phonetics. Speech sounds phonetics. 
speech patterns phonology phonology is larger it is about speech patterns in which aspect of linguistics would you talk about word formation you talk about words word formation in which branch of linguistics <clears throat> Zoomers are breaking Zoom with their answers. So many. It is morphology, correct? Words, their functions, word formation, all these come under morphology. Will you remember, guys? How words are structured into sentences. How words form sentences. This is Coming under what? How words form sentences? This is coming under what? What branch of linguistics? Yes, it is syntax. It is syntax. What is the meaning of this word? That comes under what? What is the meaning of this word? That comes under... Semantics, of course. Semantics means meaning of words. Isn't it, guys? And what studies the context of language use? What studies? Which aspect of linguistics studies the context of language use? It is pragmatics. Pragmatics. Moving on, we will talk about all these in more detail. Ore, phonetics has this familiar picture. All of us know this picture. When we started our BA class, they taught us how to draw the mouth. Nasal cavity, palate is there, lips and teeth are there. Using lips, we pronounce labial, bilabial. Uh, words, isn't it? Then uh, we pronounce using teeth, dental. We pronounce using the alveolar ridge. After teeth, immediately after that comes alveolar ridge. Those are alveolar words, sorry, sounds. After that, palatal. After that, velar. Velar is the soft part. You have to put your finger in in order to feel it. We are. After that, you can't even touch. You will puke. That is you uvular. That little tongue. You uvular. Henna, like that. All these sounds we talked about in net. A lot of questions are not asked from phonetics in the sense of uh, phonetic transcription and all. They don't ask. But they will ask what? They will ask terms. Can I, can I ask you some terms? What branch of linguistics studies the production of speech sounds? Is it articulatory linguistics or acoustic linguistics? Bolo, what aspects of phonetics? What aspects of phonetics? studies the production of speech sounds. Is it articulatory phonetics or acoustic phonetics? Of course, it is articulatory. Acoustic phonetics is about transmission of speech sounds. Acoustics means hearing. Acoustic phonetics is about transmission, reception, and perception of speech sounds. Are you getting me, guys? Receiving speech sound and perceiving speech sounds, understanding speech sounds. That is acoustic phonetics, auditory phonetics. Physical transmission is acoustic and also uh, hearing is auditory. Acu First articulatory phonetics, then acoustic phonetics, then auditory phonetics. Will you remember? Did you know, guys, Panini studied it? And tell me, uh, what, is the what is the full form of IPA in phonetics? What is the full form of 
IPA in phonetics. IPA in phonetics means International Phonetic Alphabet. International Phonetic Alphabet. Isn't it? Uh, what is the visual representation of speech sounds? What is the visual representation of speech sounds? International Phonetic Association also it can be, yes. Visual representation of speech sounds is? It is phonetic transcription, isn't it? It is phonetic transcription. Do you know what are allophones? Allophones, one sound can be pronounced in different ways. That is allophones. In Malayalam, the word, the letter n, the sound n can be n or n. N or n. They are allophones. In black, l, black. And little, little, the second kl, kl, l. They are two different sounds. Black and like are two different l. L and l. That is there in Indian languages also. L and l. They are allophones, isn't it? Yes. Now, there are so many terms like that in phonetics. A consonant that takes the role of a vowel is called what? A consonant that takes the role of a vowel. No, Princey. Car and cat has the same sounds. They are not too different. A consonant that takes the role of a vowel is called a syllabic consonant. A syllabic consonant. Very famous example is Mutton, mutton. In mutton, syllabic consonant is there. I am giving you this crash course so that you will note down all these major things and you will read extra tonight and tomorrow morning. You have to promise me this. Are you doing it every day? So terms in uh, phonetics, you should look up. One small minor question they will ask. We don't want to go wrong there. Like that in phonology also. In phonology, we study the patterns of speech sounds, isn't it? In phonology, we study the patterns of speech sounds. What are the patterns? We have terms like complementary distribution, contrastive distribution. Do you remember free variation? There are so many things in phonology. How letters are uh, distributed. Will you read up extra? If you are a beginner, don't worry. In my classes, I will teach you. We will cover everything. If you are an advanced student, you may already have heard this and studied this. Please read extra. Terms in phonology tonight and tomorrow, please read. There are terms I will explain uh, some of them, like assimilation, then syncope, elision. Very important is speech acts. Isn't it? We have in uh, speech patterns all these different, different. Uh, patterns of speech. Now, we have the supra-segmentals, stress, intonation, etc., rhythm, etc. Uh, they are also called prosodic features. Speech act is a performative function in language. Everybody knows J.L. Austin and John Searle are associated with speech act theory. Syncope and apocope, yes. Uh, Shalini is 
pointing out apocope is omission of the final sound in a word. Apocope, for example, in cup of tea. I want a cup of tea. For that, you say, I want a cup of tea. You don't say, that is uh, apocope. Syncope is omission of sounds in between. Government is wrong. Government. The pronunciation of government is government. Wednesday is wrong. You have to say Wednesday. Wednesday, government. These are examples for syncope. Will you remember, guys? So alliteration, that is another pattern of sounds. Isn't it? Sound pattern. Alliteration, assonance, consonance. Phonology is very important in understanding poetry. Phonology is important in understanding poetry. Did you understand, guys? And then we have morphology. Morphology is the study of words, isn't it? Morphology means study of words. What do we do in morphology? I'm just taking all my notes. Morphology studies morphemes. What is a morpheme? The smallest meaningful unit of language is a morpheme. Morpheme. Here in morphology, we talk about free morpheme, bound morpheme. I've given in the picture. Different kinds of morphemes are there. We also talk about allomorphs, lexemes. What is a lexeme? A basic lexical unit of language. Lexical means what you see in the dictionary. A basic lexical unit of language is called a lexeme. Did you understand? Uh, lexeme, I think they've already asked in net recently. So uh, these are important and a very important aspect of morphology in the exam is word formation. Yes, Priyanka is pointing out understanding poetry and understanding fiction. These are books by Clean the Brooks. So, uh, word formation, they always ask. There is affixation. What is the affixation? Formation of a new word by adding something to it. Isn't it? Compounding, blending. Do you remember? Smog. Smoke and fog is smog. That is blending. Whereas cupcake, email, these are words, example for compounding. Sometimes the word lab is formed by clipping. Laboratory is clipped and it becomes lab. Henna, omnibus becomes bus, that is clipping. UNICEF, UNESCO, uh, those are acronyms. Perambulator becomes pram, that is abbreviation. Okay, then there are portmanteau words also. Portmanteau words are uh, same as blended words. Blending leads to portmanteau words. There are borrowings. That means loan words. Remember, another sure shot area in exam is loan word. Yes, clipping or cutting. Truncation, there are other words for these things. Remember that in the exam, you shouldn't be confused. There are loan words, I was saying. Always one question from loan words, they ask. In AC Boss, famous book, in my classes, in my notes, I follow AC Boy largely. AC Boy is like the Bible of linguistics. And in AC Boss, uh, book, we have a lot of words, loan words given. From there, you will be asked. And then there is back formation, then proper nouns becoming words. Some of these are actually figures of speech also. Some of these are also figures of speech. Isn't it? So there are also words created by uh, great people like Shakespeare. There are 
words, word formations related to uh, post-colonialism, etc. New languages are also formed sometimes. You should make a list of words created by Shakespeare, loan words of Indian origin, uh, words that derived from Persian, from Italian, from French. Use the internet, but also use AC Boy and such established books. Always they are asking questions from established books, uh, which are there in secondary reading or suggested reading in syllabi. In syllabus, there will be suggested reading. From those books, they are asking questions. They are not asking questions from internet. If you study from internet, the problem is that the questions will come from those books only. Don't waste all your time studying from internet. This is the problem. This is why questions come, come from our encyclopedia because I have bought all the suggested reading books and I have been studying those books. Study like that. That is the trick. Okay, so these terms are very important. Will you remember loan words, then uh, word formation, all these come under morphology. Let me ask you some more questions from morphology. Okay. Uh, the plural morphemes denoted by S, E, S, E, Z, I, E, Z, a C B O B A U G H. That is the author I am saying. A C B O is prescribed all over India. A C B O. Also David Crystal. So many other authors are also there. Now tell me the plural morpheme denoted by S E S E Z I E Z. What are they examples of? They are all examples of allomorphs. Are you following me, Zoomers? They are all examples of allomorphs. They are variants of the same morpheme. Did you understand, guys? What kind of a morpheme is a root word? What kind of a morpheme is a root word? <laughs> Dulal, the Bible for loan words is AC Bob. In AC Bob, uh, loan words, one chapter is there. And also Subbarao's book. Subbarao's book is also very, very important. The, the, there also they ask questions from. Okay. Root is another example for free morpheme. Root can never be bound morpheme. A root word is always a free morpheme. Did you understand? You know, the advantage of doing PhD before you teach for net is that you understand how universities and research works. University professors who make your question papers want to defeat coaching centers. They, they will not give question. Your question papers are being made by university professors, central university professors. They want to defeat mugging up. They want to defeat coaching centers. They want to defeat random studying from internet. That is why they will ask questions from basic books that are prescribed. You should collect the syllabi across India. You should collect the suggested reading books. You should study in a very university-based approach. When you study in a university for MA, they don't want you to just take randomly some things from internet. They don't want you to go to any coaching center. Hannah. They want you to follow books. So that is why they want you. I, I'm saying you should follow that method. Then you will easily pass. That is how net is difficult. That is why net is difficult. Did you understand? Okay. No, actually, uh, they will defeat my encyclopedia also. They will not ask you questions where, where, from encyclopedia also. That is why I always say, Use encyclopedia or other books plus your research. Encyclopedia is the proper foundation. Encyclopedia is the rock hard foundation because so much is there. 
So much information is there. Did you understand? Always we see 50% of questions come from encyclopedia because so much is there. We cover all that in the classroom. But some questions will not be there in, you know, in the encyclopedia. That you will easily be able to write if you follow these methods and study. So you don't have to really attend my classes or anything. You only follow this method. Even if you don't attend my classes, no problem. But you have to follow the correct method. Did you understand? All right. Now, there is another term called Lexis. What is Lexis? Lexical morphology. It deals with the collection of lexemes. Lexemes is the collection of uh, words, lexical is connected to Bible. D did you understand? Lexical is connected to the Bible. So not Bible, sorry, dictionary. What am I saying? Lexical, the word is connected to dictionary. The, not Bible, dictionary, I was going to. <laughs> it is a mistake. I just slip off the tongue. For dictionary, I said Bible. <laughs> I was saying AC boy is Bible like that. I said wrongly. Sorry, lexical is connected to the dictionary. Did you understand? Uh, well, uh, you know, in, when you talk about lexis, you have to move from vocabulary that is single words to collection of these words. And finally, the large corpus of words in English. Did you understand? That is how you should understand vocabulary. And when you talk about all this, there are so many uh, terms associated to Lexis. Affixation, compounding, all the word formations are all coming in connection with Lexis. I just want you to remember that. After, oh, after that, I was going to say, uh, guys, I want to announce the, in Bodhi Tree Instagram, we conducted a giveaway contest. And Basundara, Nanduram, and Sarvat Khan, these people are the winners we have chosen. Is anybody, anybody any one of these three people attending? We have Bodhi Tree, 50% off for these people. Uh, we, ha we are giving 50% off for these people. And... Um, Shweta or anybody to get our encyclopedia, you can WhatsApp us or you can just uh, go to Bodhi Tree website. Bodhi Tree Encyclopedia, if you Google search, you will find the link also. So I am announcing winners are Vasundhara, Nanduram and Sarvat Khan. Congratulations to all these winners of our giveaway contest. Okay, this is, oh, you did, Neha, don't worry, another time you will get, Neha, another time you will get, okay, right, then we come to syntax, uh, syntax is the formation of sentences, isn't it, how words are arranged into sentences, we have verb phrase, noun phrase, and then these are further divided, isn't it? Many notions or terms are connected with uh, syntax. Many terms are connected with syntax, such as the figures of speech, sorry, um, not figures of speech, the parts of speech connected with syntax are the parts of speech. Then terms like agreement, expletives, reflexive pronouns, uh, things like that are all coming under syntax. Guys, in syntax, we also have kinds of sentences, simple sentence, compound sentence, com complex sentence. Remember, very, very important. Norm, Chomsky, Norm Chomsky's syntactic structures. Within syntax, Noam Chomsky coined the term syntactic structures. That means the arrangement of words, phrases, etc. in a sentence. Are you paying attention? 
Yes, offline and online classes are all beginning in October. Immediately after your exam, we are starting offline and online classes. Actually, offline classes admission is closed because of COVID. I'm taking only 100 people. Already we have more than 100 admissions. So offline classes are admissions closed. Online classes admissions going on. So associated with syntax is parts of speech, sentence types. What are the different sentence types? Interrogative sentences, declarative sentences, exclamatory sentences, imperative sentences. Isn't it, guys? They're all very, very important. And also there are... Um, inverted sentences, balanced, so many advanced types are also there. Then we have to talk about semantics. Semantics. Semantics is the study of relationship between words and meanings. When one person speaks, what is the meaning the other person understands? Are you getting me, guys? Semantics is about the relationship between words and meanings. Will you remember? We talk about homonyms, synonyms, antonyms, isn't it? They're all uh, different kinds of uh, relations related to meaning. Hyponyms, hypernyms. You might know bird, the relationship between bird and eagle or bird and crow. Isn't it, guys? Zoomers and YouTubers, pay attention. We also have metonyms, mironyms. So many are there. Uh, YouTubers, please look up all these terms. Zoomers, you have either got my notes on this or you will get also. Guys, I have another an, a interesting announcement for you. We have paid courses and paid course people have a group and we are following materials and everything there, quizzes also. I am thinking we will start a group or we will start some activities for our free students also in our group. Free students also should be like a batch, isn't it? But in paid course, there will be a lot of teaching in Free course, there will be a lot of uh, activities for self-learning, self-learning. In our Valets Test public group, we will have a structured course, free course, based on self-learning. I will give you guidance. I will give you help. There will be classes from October. Okay, would you like that? Not just scattered here and there, but in a structured manner, like a five-month course we will cover, but you have to do a lot of work on your own. But in paid classes, I will be helping you more, of course, I will be giving you material and then you can learn on your own. What, would you like that, guys? And paid course students should make use of the free course materials also. It will be amazing for everybody. In semantics, there are many terms. Uh, because it doesn't matter whether you are paying or free. Uh, of course, those who are paying your money matters. For money, I will give extra uh, service. But free course students are also our students. What is important for all of us is that we should learn. Isn't it? Yes. All right. Now, in semantics, there are terms like semantic shift. Uh, Zoomers, are you paying attention? Uh, semantics. So the good thing about it is after your paid course, you can become a free course student. You can continue your preparation with the free course materials, isn't it? Even if you are a paid student, it is only for some months. Hena? After that, you can continue studying. So that is amazing for everybody, I think. Everybody. And you can pass a lot of exams like that. I'm ready. I'm there with you. Okay. All right. In semantics, listen, everybody. In semantics, we have semantic shift, semantic narrowing, 
semantic generalization. So many important terms are there. Semantic shift matlab kya hai? It is easy to understand. The meaning changes. Very importantly, gay. The word gay had one meaning earlier. Now it has another meaning. That is semantic shift. Semantic narrowing means the meaning reduces and the meaning becomes narrow. Did you understand? Originally, girl means young person. Ambika is pointing it out. Villain, another example. Sandra is pointing out. Girl, villain. These people had another broad meaning. Now that meaning is becoming reduced. It is becoming narrow. Did you understand, guys? Wonderful it is. Semantic narrowing. Also semantic generalization. Meat also. Originally meat meant any food. But now meat only means certain foods. Isn't it, guys? Yes. Now, after semantics, am I boring you? I am going very, very slow. After semantics, we have pragmatics. What is pragmatics, everybody? I already said, na, pragmatics means focusing on the context also. We talk about socio-pragmatics, micro-pragmatics, the context also. Here we have the speech acts. Speech acts, if you don't know, please look up. There might be a question based on speech act. Speech act has three kinds. There are three types of speech acts. Remember, look up if you don't remember. Locutionary, illocutionary, perlocutionary. Isn't it, guys? Locutionary speech act. Uh, Illocutionary speech act. In locutionary, it is um, only the, the utterance, but in that is locutionary. In illocutionary, the speaker's view is also important. In locutionary, only the speech is there, but in illocutionary, the person's uh, view, personal view, is also there. In perlocutionary, the listener's reaction is also there. It is easy to remember. Locutionary means only the sentence, only the meaning. Illocutionary means the person's view is there. Perlocutionary means the listener's action is there. Did you understand? Locutionary example, is there any salt? Illocutionary means, can I have some salt please? Perlocutionary means, here is the salt. Listener is important. First is only the speech. Second is I, my view, my need. Speakers. Perlocutionary third means the listener is also there. I hope you understood everybody. So pragmatics has all these things. Uh, related to pragmatics is pragmatic competence, Communicative competence. Then we have stylistics. So many uh, different aspects are there in pragmatics. Hana, are there is graphemics. What is graphemics, guys? Graphemics means I have watched a lot of YouTubers, YouTube teachers. For the first two, three minutes, they will only motivate, motivate, motivate. Then they will say two, three points. May, uh, some points they will say. And then they will say, if you want more details, join my class. Finish. Class is over. My class is not like that. That is why people feel so bored, so heavy. Oh my God, she is killing us. One hour, I can't listen. But guys, listen to this. Please follow all this. Please read extra. You are life and career will be made. That is important, isn't it? Don't feel bored. Follow all this and please read extra, do your own work. Okay, I want you to pass. Yes, graphemics means the linguistic study of writing systems. 
how you do writing. Did you understand? Paid course people, those who have co covered all this, please go read your book, okay? Now, inside that, there are so many approaches. Graphology, graphotactics. If you just Google search, you will get all this, okay? Uh, study of the alphabet. So many things come in graphy mix. Will you read extra? Okay. Now, next point is ORE, schools of linguistics. There are many schools of linguistics, mainly structuralism, then generative linguistics, then functional linguistics, then cognitive linguistics. Only four main approaches. What are the four main approaches? Structural linguistics means studying the structure of language. Did you understand? Generative linguistics means understanding how language is generated, how sentences are generated. Functional linguistics means understanding the function of language, why we are using language. That is functional linguistics. Cognitive linguistics means how cognition happens, how you understand everything. Language as part of cognition and thinking, that is cognitive linguistics. Did you understand? It is actually so easy. Linguistics is easy. Don't have any negative thought about linguistics. It is Bechara linguistics, so simple, so easy. Uh, actually, you can enjoy linguistics more than any subject. Okay. Now, structural linguistics derived from Ferdinand de Saussure, isn't it? Signifier, signified sign, uh, paradigmatic, syntagmatic. All of you know all this. Uh, diachronic, synchronic. And related to that is Prague School. Prague School was like a bridge between structural and functional. Prague School was like a bridge between structural and functional. Will you remember? Basic things you should understand. Okay? And very, very important. Within structural linguistics, you should know American structuralism. Franz Boas. Leonard Bloomfield, Edward Sapir, K.L. Pike, all the early people, Charles Sanders Pierce, they are all American structuralists. Okay, guys, we have this easy handbook on uh, linguistics. Have you, have you seen this? Easy handbook on linguistics. It is like an easy book where all these are covered point-wise. If anybody wants it, you can buy it. It is very easy to understand. Along with that, if you have our PDF paid course people, pakka, you will get everything. Okay? And also remember, structural linguistics along with post-structural linguistics is also there. Post-structuralism in linguistics also. Because Derrida started a revolution with his structure, sign and play. Language also changed along with it. Isn't it, guys? And what is generative linguistics? Our Noam Chomsky, generative grammar, he started. After that came transformational generative grammar. First generative grammar, then transformational generative grammar. Isn't it, guys? Pay attention. Can you hear me properly? Are you following me everything? Remember to look up Noam Chomsky. Pakka, one question from Noam Chomsky will be there. Noam Chomsky's books, Noam Chomsky's ideas, please study. Okay. His first major book is Syntactic Structures, 1957. After that came Aspects of Linguistics, Theory of the Aspects of Linguistics. That is also very, very important. What are the most important ideas of Noam Chomsky? Are you taking down if you don't know? What are the most important ideas of Noam Chomsky? Competence and performance, kernel sentences. After kernel sentences, he replaced it with deep structure and surface structure. At first, he talked about kernel sentences. Then he replaced it with deep structure and surface structure. Will you remember, guys? Then trans, uh, generative grammar, transformational generative grammar, uh, language acquisition device or LAD, universal grammar, 
All these are important. One of these they will ask. Okay. All these I have given here in this book. And then how is structuralism related to generative grammar? You should know that. And how is it related to functional linguistics? Functional linguistics, very, very important. M.A.K. Halliday. That is the important figure given here. M.A.K. Halliday. Functional linguistics is all about the function of language. How language is used. Very importantly, communicative function. Hena, communicative function. And it relates to pragmatics and applied linguistics. After that came cognitive linguistics. Cognitive linguistics, Georg Lakoff. George Lakoff or Georg Lakoff. Uh, cognitive linguistics is about, it is against generative linguistics. And it is about how language is related to thought. But cognitive linguistics is different from psycholinguistics. Cognitive linguistics is different from psycholinguistics. Will you remember everybody all these things? Tonight and tomorrow morning, will you do your homework? I trust you. I am doing my work. Hannah, I am doing my work. I made the slides. I, I studied. I made the books. I am teaching you. Team test is giving you questions. We are doing so much work. You should supplement our work. You should support our work with your work. Homework every day, you should read all this. Then you will pass with amazing marks with JRF. Modern grammar is there. You know, fallacies of traditional grammar, IC analysis, all these are important. One question from uh, relating to IC analysis, or phase structure grammar can be asked in the exam. Phase structure, because of mis uh, problems in phase structure grammar came transformational generative grammar. Did you understand? Phase structure grammar did not explain language completely. That is why TG grammar came into being, isn't it guys? So read all the important points about it. One question can come from this area. Noam Chomsky, very important figure, deep structure, surface structure, important in this regard. Will you remind, remember, guys? There is also systemic functional grammar. Who developed the systemic functional grammar? Systemic functional grammar developed by M.A.K. Halliday. M.A.K. Halliday developed systemic functional grammar. Will you look up if you don't know? Don't keep saying, I don't know, I don't know. If you don't know, uh, then how can you be teachers? You are going to be teachers. Teachers are not people who study from coaching centers all the time. Teachers are people who do research, who read on their own. The coaching center will only provide the background. Coaching center will only provide the foundation. We don't need anything else. We need only background and foundation. Based on that, you should do your own research. You should pass because of your merit, isn't it? You should pass because of your merit. Next, language variations. Actually, language variations comes earlier. Language variations will come earlier. There are so many uh, different kinds of language, isn't it? Like, uh, Argot, can't, argot, you know, argot is a language that is used for secret communication. There is dialect, idiolect, register. So many uh, different kinds of language, colloquial language, pidgin and creole, lingo, patois. Language variations, one question can be asked. One question from language variations can be asked. Slang, jargon. You remember all these guys? These language variations, what do they mean? They will ask in exam. Today, tomorrow, please look up. Please do what I'm saying. Before the exam, God has given you time to study. 
God has given you enough and more time after all this time that you got. If God is giving you one year, exam is only one year, that means you should definitely pass. Otherwise, danda leke marungi, I'm telling you. Danda leke marungi if you don't study after all this time. After all this time, don't go from pillar to post. I don't know, somebody teach me, give me notes, give me PDF, somehow make me pass. Are, aise log teachers nahi hona chahiye. You are not that kind of people. You are people who are responsible. You are people who research. You are people who pass by your own merit. You are people who are empowered. And when you go for interview, the interview board will say, yes, we will give you the job because this person really knows everything. You want to be like that, right? So start now. Start now and uh, immediately research, read on your own. Okay? Language variations you should read. Next is... Uh, Language acquisition. This comes under ELT. Hena? In ELT, we have many language acquisition techniques. What are the different language acquisition uh, techniques? What are the problems? Second language learning. Who are the important figures? Most important figure is Krashen. Stephen Krashen. Please look up language uh, acquisition. And also learning and teaching methods. I just put this very famous learning pyramid here. Learning and teaching methods. All this come under ELT. Hena guys, you know, right? Who are the major figures in ELT? We should study that also. Will you do that? There is so much to do. So much. And we have time. Abhita date bhi nahi aaya. And you don't go around complaining, when will exam be? I am stressed. Are you speak as if you have studied everything. And as soon as exam happens, you will pass with 100% marks. Bad is study, sit and study. So many things, important, important things are there to revise, isn't it? So, chup chap, uh, read all these methods. Yeah, everybody is saying. Direct method, grammar translation method, silent way, suggestopedia, communicative language learning. All this you should prepare. And also look up the major linguists. Will you look up the major linguists? Starting from Ferdinand de Saussure and all that. Stephen Krashen, B.F. Skinner, George Lekoff. Many people we already mentioned. Isn't it? M.A.K. Halliday, Schumann. Schumann talked about language acquisition. So many new techniques like uh, tag mimics, call, etc. Glossomatics. All this you have to look up. The picture given here is that of uh, Leonard Bloomfield. Will you study all this, guys? Now, I know, I trust you. I know you will study. I know you will go over all this. To help you, we have questions as usual. Uh, I don't know where they send me the questions. Sorry, 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 sorry. I don't know where they send me the questions. One minute, guys. Yes. I got the questions. And today we have here with us, Prajit. Prajit, are you there? One minute, give, me, give us one minute because everybody is taking a short break. Every day we do that, don't we? We take a short break, refresh yourselves, and then half an hour, ta -da -da questions. <laughs> so, thank you, Neelam. So, Prijit is here. Let us make Prijit co-host. Is he co-host already? One minute. I am going to make him co-host. Prijit, please unmute yourself. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. 
Yes. Bridget, these days in cultural study, we, as usual, we will talk for one minute and then go over to the questions. These days, Bridget, in our cultural studies research forum, you are posting some interesting topics, isn't it, Bridget? Some interesting so, reading so. material. Uh, let us talk to our students about the importance of cultural studies, the importance of reading all these articles, the importance of developing a perspective, how they will be able to do research better. Bridget, please share with us your thoughts for one minute. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I think, you know, uh, in a, uh, nowadays, uh, a monolingual or monodirectional language learning or literature learning uh, will not help us to, you know, um, stand or teach or learn <laughs> more. So we need a multi uh, or uh, intersectional, you know, a multidisciplinary learning experience. So team exactly. TUS uh, is presenting you, uh, giving you an opportunity to know the recent trends, then changes, the updates in uh, literature, language, and all the disciplines of uh, literature, language, and uh, everything. So in our cultural uh, research uh, forum, we are presenting you, we are giving you an opportunity to understand, to learn, to know, to read, to research uh, the changes and the updates in, in literature. Yes. Uh, as ma'am say, say, uh, says, it's an opportunity for you guys to join uh, our cultural research forum uh, to update ourselves. Uh, as ma'am uh, usually pointed out, as students of literature, we are you know, uh, learning each and every day. So uh, um, myself learning, you know, <laughs> ma'am, uh, humbly saying she's also learning. And uh, of course, we are all, all learning there. Right? So from uh, your side also, you know, uh, when my uh, postgraduate day, uh, my professor always say, uh, you know, uh, teaching, learning is like unlearning and relearning. So we are unlearning many things and uh, relearning. So use the opportunity and, uh, I, I, you know, uh, why the perspectives? Yes, ma'am. Bridget, we have to point out it is free. Culture Studies Research Forum and its public lectures are absolutely free. No money needed, no paid course, nothing. It definitely, is a free definitely. platform we have created. Uh, you know, uh, what Lusters is providing is uh, it's like an open source, open, you know, uh, platform for everyone to learn, to understand the trends. Uh, we uh, often invite, you know, uh, uh, non and, uh, you know, uh, uh, very well-known professors, researchers, and scholars from all over uh, India to give lectures. Uh, we are yes. expecting, uh, you know, one of the famous uh, uh, gender and queer uh, writer in this, uh, maybe next week. Uh, I had to confirm uh, the date. That's why I'm not, uh, you know, announcing it. Like, we will announce in, an, in sure. our platform very shortly. So join us and learn. Uh, nothing will uh, limit you to, you know, uh, update. Bridget, uh, please ask Swalik to post the link to our Culture Studies Research Forum group in the description of this video. And also, please post a link to join the group in our Valestas public group. Definitely, ma'am. Definitely. I will, I will ask. Many people are asking how to join. So, uh, if from Valestas public group or from the description of this video, they can get the link. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, guys, yes. um, it's an opportunity for you and uh, join us and enjoy. Enjoy life. Our mo well, listen to me, everybody. One more thing I want to clarify. Our most important aim is to promote learning, is to help people learn. When we take money for books or classes, it is only because we have to keep this going because we have so many people to pay, so many bills to pay. We are not after making money or stealing your money or anything. Uh, you know, the system requires a certain amount of money to run. That is the money we are taking. We are not growing richer by that. We are actually... Uh, passionately, uh, enthusiastically 
working more than uh, whatever money we actually make. That is the truth. But we love it. We are not complaining. It is okay. Because it's amazing. We are all learning and we are doing amazing things together. So please don't think well, these are all different ways of collecting money from you. It is not like that. Thank you. So I think that refreshed. Let us go to the questions without wasting time. Yes. Okay. The first question. Are you ready? Okay. The smallest meaningful unit of a language is called dash. Morpheme, phoneme, syntax. Come on, answers, please. Yes. yes. That is easy because we covered it. True, I'm sure true. they will answer. But there are some comments <laughs> with uh, confusing or uh, confusions. It's okay. The answer is smallest meaningful unit of language. Answer is sorry. It's morpheme. It's a morpheme. I think um, I've already explained it. Yes. Next question. Who among the following is considered as the father of modern linguistics? It's Roman Jacobson, Noam Chomsky, David Christian. Modern linguistics. Again, father of modern linguistics. Yes. The answer is? None other than Noam Chomsky. I'm sure all of you know that Chomsky is not only a linguist, he's also a very major cultural critic. He has uh, fought against uh, American capitalism and globalization tooth and nail. Wow. Next question. Identify the type of morpheme that either change the lexical category or the meaning of form. Bound morphemes, derivational morphemes, free morphemes. So which type of morpheme that either changes the lexical category or the meaning of a form? Okay. The answer is? Here is the answer. Derivational morphemes. Derivational morphemes change the lexical category, the category it is, or meaning when they are derived. Please read extra also. Next. Question, which of the following is not a work by Noam Chomsky? Options, aspects of the theory of syntax, knowledge of language, deaf sentence. Not a work by Noam Chomsky. Aspects of the theory of syntax, I already said. Is it B or C? Da -da -da. It's option C, deaf sentence. Homework, guys. Who wrote deaf sentence? Tell us in the next class. Next question. Question. What is universal grammar according to Noam Chomsky? A. The innate human ability to acquire language or the grammar common to all languages in the world or the standardized grammar of any given language. So what is the universal grammar according to Noam Chomsky? I'm sure they will answer this one too. The correct answer is? The innate human ability to acquire language. So Noam Chomsky believed that all human beings have an innate ability to acquire language. This he called universal grammar. Next question. Which of the following is not a work by Leonard Bloomfield? Linguist aspects of science, culture, language, and personality. Tagalog text with grammatical analysis. Not wow. a work. Uh, 
Leonard Bloomfield's works also you should know. He was also a very major writer. Are Sanjana, homework she is doing now itself. Deaf <laughs> Sentences by David Lodge. <laughs> Power so of Leonard Google. Bloomfield's books. Yes, Bridget? No, no, I'm saying it's a power of Google. <laughs> yes, answer is? The answer is culture, language and personality. Sanjana, who wrote this, Sanjana? <laughs> culture, language and personality. Leonard Bloomfield wrote linguistic aspects of science and Tagalog texts. Remember that. True. Identify the pair that pioneered social linguists in the West. Is it Leonard Bloomfield and Noam Chomsky, or William Labov and Basil Bernstein, or Love Vygotsky and Thorndike? Which pair of linguists pioneered sociolinguistics? One of them given here is the father of sociolinguistics. Who is that? Answer is? B. William Labov and Basil Bernstein. That's right. William Labov is the pioneering father of sociolinguistics. Next question. The changes which the Indo-Germanic plausive consonants underwent during the primitive Germanic period, that is before the Germanic parent language became differentiated into separate Germanic languages is called. Is it Grimm's law or Werner's law or the great vowel shift? The changes. Remember these three are very important terms, important developments. All these three you should know. What is Grimm's law? What is Werner's law? What is great vowel shift? So many easy YouTube videos and reading material, etc. is there in internet. Anybody who wants to learn can learn. So what are the changes which the Indo-Germanic plosive consonants underwent? It cannot be great travel shift, isn't it, Bridget? Because <laughs> consonants underwent. <laughs> And we can apply some common sense also. And the answer comes, uh -huh. Grimm's law. Really, Prajit and others, I, as I have told you before, many questions in net are actually based on your common sense, knowledge of English language. They are not that difficult. You can pass if you try. Just keep your cool in the exam hall. Don't panic. Relax and confidently Intelligently approach the question. True. Next. Question. Identify the branch of linguistics that deals with the practical application of language studies, which include language translation, language teaching, speech therapy, etc. Options. Computational linguistics, applied linguistics, psycholinguistics. The practical application of language studies, which include language translation, language teaching, speech therapy, etc. We already discussed this during the lecture. Yes. The answer is easy. It is applied linguistics. I told you specifically applied linguistics is about translation. It's about language teaching, speech therapy. Applied linguistics helps us to use language in better forms. Next. Question. The Indo-European family of language is broadly divided into dash and dash. Is it Celtic and Slavonic? Is it West Germanic and East Germanic? Or Satum and Centum? Wow, we all learned this in BA. People who did not do BA English, don't worry. Just spend some time studying history of language also. Wow. I, I just you remember... Do a little bit of extra work, but it's... Yes. Yes, Bridget? No, no. no I'm just remembering the uh, tree, you know, the language tree. Ah, yes. 
So it is divided into its satum and centum. Yes, please look up if you don't know what it is. Next. Question. Who among the following developed the speaking method, an acronym for setting participants, ends, act sequence, keys, instrumentalities, norms, and genres that is used to analyze speech events in a particular cultural context? Options William Ladov, Delheims, Basil Bernstein. Speaking method. Have you heard of that one? It is an acronym actually. S P E A K I N G. Setting participants, ends, act sequence, keys, instrumentalities, norms, and genres. The answer is Delheims. It's also associated with communicative competence. Yes. And the next question. Among the following, identify the dialect that later became standard English. East Midland, Mercian, Northumbrian. In this dialect, Chaucer wrote, isn't it, guys? <laughs> Ta -da! East Midland. Yes. Next question. Next. Which of the following is not a word formation process? Compounding, minimalism, or blending? Not a word formation process. I mentioned two of these already in the lecture. Yes. It is? Minimalism. Yes. I hope you're enjoying, guys. Did you like the questions? Next. Question. The term, the great vowel ship was coined by Noam Chomsky, Leonard Bloomfield, Otto Jaspers. Oh, Who coined the term? That be... <laughs> okay. I think that is easy. The answer is? Otto Jaspersen. Yes, the great vowel shift. He was a very auto yes person, was a very famous linguist. Remember? Please read up. Question. Yeah. The theory of the three circles of English development in India is associated with the Indian language. Braj Kachru, Rukhia Hazan, Emuna Kachru. Uh, the theory of the three circles of English development in India. So, which is three associated with... Three concentric circles. Which, yes. Hmm. Guys, in uh, linguistics, remember, give special attention to Indian linguists. Yes. The answer is... Braj Kachru. Raj B. Kachru was a famous uh, teacher, professor. The Alchemy of English, remember? Look up his important works. Next. Question. Chortle, small, branch, etc. are examples of portmanteau words, blending, affixation. So how do you associate these uh, words? There is only a small difference between portmanteau words and blending. They look like the same. But as I have already told you, they're actually... Do you remember? Uh, answers are coming. Yes. Portmanteau is often called a blend word. And here is the answer, portmanteau words. But in dictionaries, etc., you can see uh, uh, some difference also. Yes. That's why we gave this question. 
maybe in your homework you should check you know more examples and meanings you know so that you can update yourself in merriam webster etc the, the the two words are distinguished also okay next question which of the following even was instrumental in the development of a standard variety of english popularity of novels or the establishment of william caxton's printing press or an order by the queen of england that viewed east midland as the standard variety come on come on no more time yes it's a uh, revolutionary movement uh, it's a clue <laughs> what even was instrumental in developing the standard variety of english it is the establishment of william caxton's printing press so yes. that brings us to the end of this session on language thank you so much prajit and team tes Thank you so much, YouTubers and Zoomers. Thank you for joining us, for doing your work. Thank you for studying properly because then you are going to pass, and we are going to be proud of you. So good night, everybody, and um, I hope you will read extra. I am ending the session now. YouTubers, bye bye. See you tomorrow.